So, I am a designer, and you could say that a large part of my job description is to do creativity. And I've been thinking about what the actual value of creativity is in everyday life. When I talk to people about this, they usually say something like, sure, creativity is important, we all need art, we need movies, we need music, we need beautiful objects around us, all that. But I don't think that's really what the, what the actual value of creativity is. Today, I'm going to talk about why I think creativity is important and how you can be a little bit more creative. The Industrial Revolution transformed societies from a loose network to a highly tuned machine, increasing efficiency by focusing on linear processes, like production lines, where one person does A, so another person can do B, and another can do C, and so on. And that has played out for the past 100 years. This linear view still runs deep throughout society today. I bet that you can remember from your time at school all the times that you studied for a test by memorizing the right answers so you could pass the test and then forget all about it the day after, until it was time to do the next test. There's a quote by Pablo Picasso that you may have heard. It goes like this. Every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once they grow up. As we age and grow in experience, the less creative we tend to become. Not because of anything biological, but because we've spent our entire lives up until that point learning what is possible and what's not, that there's a right way and a wrong way to do things, and we have a heightened perception of negative consequences of being wrong or not fitting into the group which makes us risk averse. So basically, we become less creative because we know more, or we think we know more. Because creativity is not about knowing, it's about exploring. It's about discovering something. Imagine for a second that you were dropped in the middle of the wilderness somewhere by helicopter. And there's two scenarios here. In the first, you're given a map that marks your location and your destination and a path to get there with all the obstacles in the way. Here, you would most likely just look at your map and walk straight to your destination, barely looking up. Sure, it's efficient, but you'll most likely miss a lot of things along the way. That's knowing. The second scenario is basically the same. You're dropped in the middle of nowhere by helicopter, but this time, there's no map. You don't know where you are, you don't know where you're going, and you don't know how you're going to get there. For this, you need to do some exploration to find the answers. And that's more like life is. We have more opportunities and options today than ever before. But we still approach things much in the same way as we did when we were working in a car factory in the 1930s. Which is useful for when you're facing something predictable. When you know the steps you need to take, how to take them, and in which order. But as you know, many of life's problems are not like that. For those, we need creativity. The classic definition of design by Herb Simon is this. To devise courses of action aimed at changing existing situations into preferred ones. So if you're in a situation and you find a way to make it better, you're basically designing. Like a nurse who finds a way to make the experience more tolerable for a child who's afraid of needles or finding different ways of saving money when you're in an economic dry spell, or find, figuring out how to make new friends when you move to a new city. All of these take some creativity, because there usually isn't a set path for you to take, and you have to do some exploration to find the answers. Creativity can also help you adapt. Here's an example. For most of history, a painter's job was not to create anything new. It was to depict something out in the world. Plato said this, will we say of a painter that he makes something? Certainly not, he merely imitates. But when the camera became more widely accessible in the late 1800s, people could now get an image of whatever they wanted cheaper, faster, and more accurately than what a painter could make. Artists did not stop making art, however. They just went where cameras could not go. They started depicting things that were not there, they infused interpretation into their work, 
or went entirely abstract. Things that would not, be, not have been of much value before then. So by being a little creative, you can adapt to a, to a setback or an obstacle instead of just giving up. And you might even find a way of making it into an opportunity. Being creative also makes you care more about the outcome, going from a passive stance to taking more active ownership. Leonardo da Vinci is probably one of the best examples of a creative mind. You've all seen his stuff, like the Mona Lisa and his sketches of inventions like the flying machine. And it's easy to say that he was just a creative genius and he was different from us and just leave it at that. And while it is true he was a genius, it's worth remembering that he was largely self-educated and it was actually his insane level of curiosity about things that actually set him apart. One time he was commissioned to make a statue honoring a duke in Milan, which would depict the duke riding on a horse. But Leonardo was more interested in the horse than in the rider. As was typical for him, he got maybe a little carried away. He made a ton of sketches, models and diagrams of horse's anatomy and this up here is how he was going to cast this giant statue. He was really pushing what they could do at the time. He would even cut into dead horses to understand their anatomy so he would actually understand them from the inside out. He kept exploring and investigating, trying to understand all the elements involved until the patron that commissioned the work started to get worried that Leonardo wasn't going to finish the statue. And he was right to be worried because by the time he was getting ready, the French invaded and the bronze was needed to make cannons. So the statue never got made. If you didn't know any better, you would say that Leonardo had a bit of a procrastination problem. After all, this painting here on the left, uh, called The Virgin on the Rocks, was supposed to take him seven months to complete, but it ended up taking him 25 years. The Mona Lisa, his most famous work, took him 15 years to complete, but he was far from lazy. These may all sound like failures. In the case of the horse statue, if Leonardo just did what was asked of him, just design a, model, design a sculpture, make a model, make a mold, pour the bronze in, he would have been done in time and the sculpture would be complete. But everything that he learned when working on his projects came to use later, leading him to make, some, leading him to make discoveries that would not become a knowledge until centuries after his death in some cases. And of course, he would go on to create some of the greatest works of all time. So a large part of being creative, I think, is taking responsibility for something. It's thinking that could be good and then finding a way to make it happen. Looking for opportunities that aren't right in front of us, things that you have to dig for. It's not about checking things off of a list or doing things only because somebody told you to do so. Leonardo wasn't just satisfied with making a random statue of a guy on a horse. He went to insane lengths to make his vision happen. So I would say that the most powerful form of creativity goes beyond just finding the options, trying to trying to make something better happen. Okay, so these were some pretty lofty examples of creativity. And you may be thinking, but how can I be more creative in my life? Here's a few things that, have, that I think can help you along the way. The first thing is about ideation, which is really just a fancy way of saying coming up with ideas. Some say quality over quantity, but it's really quantity leads to quality. The more ideas that you can generate, the more options you can choose from. And you can push past the first three ideas that you have. And you can also find associations between your ideas. This is why curiosity is such an important, useful trait, because the wider the net of your previous experiences, the more points you, you have to make associations between. The difficult thing here is not to judge your ideas. As a matter of fact, dumb ideas are encouraged. Think of this as playing Cards Against Humanity. For those of you who don't know, Cards Against Humanity is a game where you 
where you have a black card with a question or a statement with a blank that you're supposed to fill. In this case, it says, instead of coal, Santa now gives the bad children blank. And you're supposed to fill in the blank with one of the white answer cards, and the funniest combination wins. If we take a random card here, the complete sentence would be, instead of coal, Santa now gives the bad children the screams, the terrible screams. The funniest sessions aren't the most logical answers. They're just, they're just different enough uh, while still making sense in some weird way. They also aren't too far removed from the question. That would just be random, which can be funny sometimes, but isn't as effective. And of course, the more cards you have on hand, the better your chances of success. So if you think of this point as the question or statement that you're trying to address, and this circle is everything that makes sense for it. This circle is everything that's too close to the question. It's too obvious, boring, or similar to other ideas. So if you're in here, you can push out a little bit more. If you're way out here, you've gone too far, and it's just random gibberish. Of course, when you're doing this, you want to generate as many ideas as you can, so it'll end up looking something like this. And again, don't judge for now, because even the things that are way out, outside the circle, can still be of use. And I'll get to that j in just a minute. You can also think to yourself, what could this be good for? Also called reframing. You may not recognize the name Art Fry, but I guarantee that you have used his product. A scientist at 3M was trying to develop a new superglue. But instead, he failed and made a really, really weak glue. And he didn't know what to do with it. Art Fry saw this glue and thought that it would be perfect for keeping his notes in his Bible, since they kept falling out all the time, and it also wouldn't destroy the Bible. And that's how Post-its came to the world. By turning a seeming failure, uh, by making small changes, you can turn a seeming failure into a success, by changing the context, situation, or other small tweaks. So if you have an idea that's way outside there and it doesn't make sense for what you're trying to do, the nice thing is that there may be something else that it works for. You just need to go out and find it. If nothing's clicking, step away for a while and do something else. This is also called incubation. Everybody hates a micromanager. You know when you're working on something and somebody keeps sticking their head in every two minutes and telling you what to do. That's what you're doing to your brain when you don't give it some space and time to work. When your brain is in its idle state, that is, it's not actively thinking about something, you're engaging in what's called the default mode network, which lets ideas bounce around in your head and make connections. This is why you sometimes get good ideas in the shower or when taking long walks. This is probably the thing that has helped me personally the most, but it's also the hardest to remember because it feels so counterintuitive. When you're facing something, it feels like you just need to constantly keep pushing, which you do sometimes, but it's not always the best for when you're trying to be creative. It's like you're Sisyphus, who was punished by the gods to push a boulder up a hill, and every time he got to the top, the boulder would fall down, and he would have to do it all over again for eternity. But I think if Sisyphus would just chill out a little bit and maybe do something else, like take a shower, take a walk, do some Sudoku. Maybe you could figure something else out that could solve his predicament. Life can get complex and daunting at times, but when you're in it, try to remember that you probably have more options than you think. You just need to go out and find them. And remember that a good idea means little if you don't execute on it. Thank you. <laughs>